Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to make a decadent peach cobbler. It's a very easy recipe um, and it is very well liked by everyone that I've made it for so I wanted to share it with you today. So let's just get into it and go over the ingredients. You're going to need some peaches. I um, have used frozen and canned peaches. Um, both of them work very well. So whatever you prefer, you can use. If you use the canned peaches, you'll want to get um, two of the big cans. I think they're like 29 ounces. You'll want to get two of those or four bags of the frozen peaches. Okay. And you'll need um, two pie crusts, two sticks of unsalted butter, some sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and some good vanilla also you will need some plain breadcrumbs i know that sounds weird but i'm telling you it really works well in this recipe the breadcrumbs i found is a must and i would not omit them um, some people use cornstarch to thicken up their um mixture which is good too but i found that the breadcrumbs work really well and so I am using, going to use one of these half sheet um, aluminum pans. Um, I guess you could use, I don't know, maybe a 10 inch pan or even a 9 by 13 pan you probably could use. But these I find very handy, especially when you're transporting, transporting it and taking it to someone else's house for an event, which I'm doing today. Um, so you'll want to have your oven preheated at 350 degrees and so let's get started okay so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add your peaches to this pot you're going to turn it on like medium low and you're going to add a cup of your sugar this is a cup and a fourth so I'm going to leave a little bit um, behind um, and I will have all of the measurements in the description box. So just check there um, for the complete recipe. You're going to add one stick of your butter. And you're going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of nutmeg. And what you're going to do is you're going to let that come to a simmer, let the butter and everything melt. Um, sometimes I do like to cover it to kind of speed up the process. And then once it's melted, you will add your breadcrumbs. So let's let that melt and we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, so once your mixture has come to a boil, I do recommend tasting it um, just to make sure you don't need any additional sugar cinnamon or nutmeg because depending on you know the tartness of your peaches you might want to balance that out a little bit I've tasted mine it is perfect so now you can add your breadcrumbs now this is a half a cup of breadcrumbs so you want to stir that in and that should be enough to thicken it up um, cook it for another I'd say minute to see how it thickens up. If you need it a little thicker, you can add a little more breadcrumbs, but I've never really had to do that. That's been fine. I also add in my vanilla at this point. And I say about a teaspoon of vanilla is good. All right, so that is actually looking really, really good. Thick. Like I said, you don't cook it that much after you put the breadcrumbs in, just for maybe like a minute or so, and then turn it off, and now we can go and work on our pie crust. Okay, so next what you're gonna do is you're going to put one of your pie crusts in the bottom of your pan. And it's best if you kinda let your pie crust come to room temperature a little bit. Now, what I like to do is I like to use four pie crusts because as you see, it doesn't stretch all the way to the length of the pan. 
So, um, I didn't show both boxes earlier, but um, you will want to use two in the bottom and two on the top. Um, sometimes I don't use all four. I kind of cut it to come up to the sides. Maybe cut a little of the excess off. But all in all, you will want to get two boxes of pie crust. Okay. Now, I can get the other one out. Just unroll the second one. And kind of lay it down. So what I do, and this is very rustic, because <laughs> it'll look all good in the end, is I will take some of these strips and Add it to the sides because I like a lot of crust. So I want my crust to come all the way up to the side. So you just do some patchwork to make that happen. Okay. Like I said, I've always grown up with rustic looking peach cobblers and I just think that's that's the best way to do it. I have fond memories of that as a child. And I want it to look rustic and just take a spoon to it and scoop it out. Pair it up with some vanilla ice cream is my favorite way to do it. So as you can see, I have used all two pie crusts in this bottom. Pan. Okay, so it's looking good, and you want to press it into your pan because you do not want it to bubble up on you. So press it even into the sides of the pan. Okay. This is looking really good. Okay. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take some of your remaining sugar and you're going to sprinkle that into the bottom of your crust and what I find that this does it really keeps your crust from getting soggy gives it flavor but I think that this is a step that some people just don't do and I found that you know the crust is a little soggy I like me a nice um, crispy crust so just use as much as you want. I don't think I'm going to use all of this, but you just put that in the bottom. Now the other thing you're going to do from your second stick of butter is you're going to put dots of butter on, the, on top of that sugar on your crust. Now I typically don't use the whole second um, stick doing this, but you can uh, see what your liking is, but I do like to use a good amount to cover the bottom. Like I said, I use my hands. My hands are clean. This is the best way to cook. And you just pinch that butter off and make sure your whole bottom crust is dotted with butter and sugar. And generally I think I use probably at least a half a stick, maybe a little bit more than that um, on this bottom crust. 
Remember, this is unsalted butter. Don't want to use a salty kind because you don't want it too salty. And again, all of the uh, measurements, instructions are in the description box. And just a little bit more. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm just going to clean up my hands and then we'll continue on. Okay, so now we're going to pour our mixture into the pan. Alrighty. Get the rest of this out. It smells so good. Oh my gosh, you can smell the cinnamon. The nutmeg and see how that's like the perfect amount for this size pan four bags of frozen peaches it's like perfect now you see how those breadcrumbs really thicken up the sauce they'll continue to just you know once it's in the oven it'll continue to cook really nicely okay so now you're going to top it with the top crust now, I like to, like I said, I like a lot of crust, so four, four um, pie crust is perfect, and you're just going to top that, and you're going to add the second one, and overlapping it is fine, gives you more crust. <laughs> and like I said, sometimes I will cut off a little of the excess, excess um, crust because you know you don't want it too you want it to be able to cook well you don't want too much so like to me like I said I like rustic so this looks good to me. So I didn't quite use, you see I have these, this strip and this strip here. So for the top, I didn't use as much, but that's okay. Just wanna make sure you have enough, so I always buy four. That looks good to me. And one thing I do is I just always make sure I cut a slit in the middle because you do not want it to explode on you. Okay, so now we're gonna put this in the oven. And of course, we're just looking for golden brown. So we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is that I do top it with a few more chips of butter. Now that helps it brown really nicely. So I'm going to correct myself in a, bit, a little bit. I do use almost the whole stick of the second, um, the whole stick of the second stick of butter. I pretty much use all of it. I have maybe about a fourth of a stick left. Um, so I'm going to top it, just get it all over the surface, and of course this makes it just taste even better. Alright, so now you can put it in the oven. So this is how it looks when it comes out the oven, all nice and bubbly. This actually cooked for about um, 55 minutes. So it did take longer, um, you know, the more you make, the bigger your pan is, it'll take longer. I would start checking if you make this size pan, maybe start checking in after 40 minutes and see how it goes. 
but I think this looks absolutely delicious. Um, I'm not going to cut into it right now because I am taking it to an event, but I will get a shot of it when it is scooped out. Uh, okay, and I hope you make this recipe.